from the streets to a successful startup owner, a homeless boy who started the powerful Louis Vuitton. Let us take you on a journey on how a homeless boy built this vast empire that has hollowed stature in the world of fashion with just hopes and dreams. Now his story continues to inspire and will continue to inspire countless generations. Rise of the Founding Father The founding father of Louis Vuitton's dream served as the impetus for the company's development. When the company's founder Louis Vuitton started his apprenticeship with Parisian trunk manufacturer Montreux Marechal in 1937, he was just 16 years old in order to realize his dream of becoming a maltier or trunk builder. Vuitton, who was born in Anchet, traveled 2,765.102 miles by foot from his hometown to the European megacity. Vuitton's talent allowed him to stand out at the Parisian Atelier at a time when customers were ordering custom-made trunks. Vuitton founded his own workshop at 4 Rue Neuve de Capuchine, close to the place Vendôme in Paris in 1854 after honing his craft for 17 years at Montreux Marechal's Atelier. Vuitton was in a good position because Eugénie de Montejo, the French empress, had designated him as her official trunk maker and packer just a year earlier. Vuitton relocated his business to the city's Anchères sur Seine commune. Today, the Anchères sur Seine studio is a key representation of Louis Vuitton's history and the inspiration behind all of the fashion house's creations. The label had only 20 employees when it first opened. The Anchères sur Seine Louis Vuitton building had 225 employees by 1914. Up until 1977, the brand's atelier served as its own workshop, employing over 170 artisans. Today, visitors to the site treat it like a holy place. The Anyer Shursen the Anyer Shursen grounds include an Art Nouveau-style private museum, as well as an operational studio where Louis Vuitton products are designed and produced for international markets. The Louis Vuitton family originally lived there. The Anyer Shursen Atelier has had a major impact on the Louis Vuitton's brand's history. This is where the Trianon trunk, a flat-top gray trunk from the brand, was made. For banker Albert Kahn, Louis Vuitton created the first personalized trunk. But possibly one of Louis Vuitton's greatest creations was a personalized sleeping trunk made for French explorer Pierre Savignon de Bratza in 1874. For someone like Bratza, the bed trunk was essentially a customized trunk that could be transformed into a bed. The famous explorer would continue to be a devoted supporter of the company until his passing in 1905, revolutionizing Louis Vuitton locks. With its flat top, the bed trunk was more portable and stackable than other trunks with rounded tops, making it a groundbreaking design. Flat tops made sure that the bags could be stacked easily, resulting in better management of luggage since it was also a time when people traveled mostly in horse-drawn carriages, ships, or steam trains. Despite the trunk's early notoriety, theft remained a serious issue for the founder of Louis Vuitton. In those days, sly robbers frequently stole items from trunks. As a result, in 1886, Georges Vuitton, Louis Vuitton's only son, collaborated with his father to create a lock mechanism that drastically transformed luggage security. The mechanism was renowned for being pickproof and had two spring buckles. The mechanism was renowned for being pickproof and had two spring buckles. The lock, which Georges later patented, has proven to be so successful that Louis Vuitton bags still have it today. After Louis Vuitton passed away in 1892 at the age of 70, Georges assumed control of the company, which was still recognized as a manufacturer of upscale luggage. At the Chicago World Fair a year later, he introduced the brand for the first time outside of France. In fact, Georges' inventiveness played a crucial role in turning his father's business into a global juggernaut in the luxury lifestyle industry. The iconic Louis Vuitton monogram Establishing the leading fashion house and an enduring icon, the renowned Louis Vuitton monogram is one of the most well-known things Georges accomplished while serving as its head. Even while the brand's founder was still alive, it had to deal with the product limitations. He began employing damier print canvas and hand-painted striped patterns on future Louis Vuitton trunks to set them apart from low-quality imitations. The canvas with a damier print was particularly notable because the interior was stamped with marked L. Vuitton Depezy. 
George created the brand's beige on brown characteristic monogram canvas in 1896, including his father's initials LD together with graphic flowers and catrafoil. The luxury label has since produced a wide range of products, almost all of which prominently displayed the iconic monogram. The monogram has maintained the brand's distinctive mark despite modest design changes, making its products readily recognizable in the world of luxury lifestyle. Six fashion designers, Vivian Westwood, Romeo Geely, Sibila, Manolo Blahnik, Isaac Mizrahi, and Helmut Lang were asked to produce distinctive Louis Vuitton luggage pieces using the iconic print in 1996 as part of the brand's celebration of the monogram's 100th anniversary. The ensemble, which also comprised an oval-shaped shoe trunk, a backpack with an integrated umbrella, and a vinyl record box was later displayed all over the world a historic request, and a controversy. In the first half of the 20th century, French fashion designer and entrepreneur Coco Chanel became interested in the brand. She also asked the company to make the enduring domed handbag in 1925, which was known as the Squire. The same Louis Vuitton bag would be given the new name Alma 30 years later. The Louis Vuitton Speedy and Key Ball, among other small bags, were developed in the 1930s thanks to the collaboration's success. Following the passing of his father in 1936, Gaston Louis Vuitton, Georges' eldest son, assumed control of the fashion house. Gaston guided the company through the upheaval of World War II in Europe while making sure that innovation proceeded unrestrained and the brand remained relevant. But perhaps the brand has been tarnished by this time. According to a 2004 article in The Guardian, the Vuitton family allegedly supported the Vichy dictatorship led by Marshal Philippe Pétain and profited from trade with the Germans during World War II, according to Stephanie Bonvicini's book, Louis Vuitton, A French Saga. The corporation informed Bonvicini that records from the years 1930 to 1945 had been destroyed in a fire when she requested information about the company's wartime operations, according to Bonvicini's account to the media outlet. LVMH had already acquired Louis Vuitton by the time of the revelation. An LVMH representative reportedly said to the French satirical publication La Canard Anchini, We don't reject the facts, but unhappily the author has exaggerated the Vichy affair, according to The Guardian. After the news broke, an LVMH spokeswoman told The Guardian, This is old news. The time period covered in the book was when it was a family-run business long before it joined LVMH. We are tolerant, diversified, and everything else a contemporary business ought to be. Celebrities using LV bags and the merger of LVMH. In addition to the controversy, Gaston's tenure as the patriarch of the family lineage helped to expand on the pillars and foundations set by his father and grandparents. In 1966, he launched the cylindrical Papillon bag, which continues to be one of the most recognizable items of the Louis Vuitton brand. He added leather to Louis Vuitton masterpieces. In the 1960s, when Louis Vuitton's fame grew, it was common to see the brand on A-listers like French singer and actress Juliette Greco, French actress Catherine Deneuve, and Catherine Deneuve's husband, fashion photographer David Bailey. Famously captured in 1960 with a stack of Louis Vuitton luggage while on vacation in Paris was the Italian actress Anna Magnani. Henry Rackemeyer, who had wed Odile Vuitton, succeeded Gaston after his passing in 1977. There were just two Louis Vuitton outlets in France, and less than $10 million in sales were made there, despite the brand's reputation among the French aristocracy. Despite the brand's reputation among the French aristocracy, Rackemeyer, a self-made steel magnate, is recognized for firmly establishing Louis Vuitton on the international stage. Under his leadership, the high-end fashion brand began to grow by opening more stores in significant cities outside of France. After Rockamere took over, the Maison opened more than 100 outlets worldwide in less than 10 years. The company stopped being family-owned in 1984 and went public. Three years later, it merged with the upscale champagne brand Moe Chandon and the cognac brand Hennessy to create what is now known as LVMH. LVMH was run by Rackamir until a legal dispute resulted in his removal and the appointment of Bernard Arnold as CEO in 1990. Even though Louis Vuitton was a household name for high-end bags, its meteoric rise in the fashion industry did not really start until the 1990s, 
After joining LVMH, Louis Vuitton as a brand started a new investigation of the world of luxury fashion and how an elite clientele dresses today. After Yves Carcel took over as brand president in 1990, the year that the Vuitton family's managerial control of the company effectively ended, the seed of this new perspective on fashion was planted. The Rise of Louis Vuitton Under Marc Jacobs a young fashion designer from New York named Marc Jacobs joined Louis Vuitton seven years later in 1997 as its creative director, and he would not only elevate the brand's status as a label, but also revolutionize the fashion industry. He introduced the company's first ever ready-to-wear line. This was the start of the company's illustrious ascension to the status of a global fashion powerhouse, one that today rivals equally distinguished rivals under the LVMH brand including Gucci, Balenciaga, Calvin Klein, Chanel, and Burberry. Jacobs was a runway conductor of the highest kind. Supermodels like Naomi Campbell and Kate Moss walked the runway wearing his original creations, which attracted the attention of fashion fans. By employing them widely as a print pattern on everything from tights to jackets and hats to fans during his 16 years at Louis Vuitton, Jacobs gave a new character to the traditional monogram canvas. Since many of the pieces were sold at Louis Vuitton stores, the business was able to attract a larger group of wealthy consumers who desired to dress in Louis Vuitton fashion. The maverick fashion designer's highly inventive imagination has contributed to the brand's partnerships with some of the best current artists in the world. This redefinition of Louis Vuitton's classic bags was notable for the artist's own fashion choices. Jacobs led Louis Vuitton's creative team there until 2014. He resigned from his position to devote all of his time to his own label, which he had started before working for the French luxury company. With a marker worth of over $30 billion, LV is currently the most valuable luxury brand worldwide. This is the story of a young man who created a multi-billion dollar company from nothing, built on dreams and aspirations. If the tale inspired and fired up your spirit, please do drop a like, comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel for more inspiration. Fly high!